dear BRICS colleagues, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Good morning for us because we are here in Brazil, in Manaus. Manaus is one hour less than Brasilia, so it's almost seven o'clock here in Manaus. It's, we are very happy and very glad to meet you in the third day of the meeting of the BRICS group, working group on material science and nanotechnology. Thank you very much, Brazilian delegates here with me. Thank you very much, the Russia, India, China, and South Africa delegates. It's a great pleasure have you with us. Yesterday we had a very, a very uh, impressive day, a very, of course, a very long day too, but uh, a very fruitful day. Thank you very much all. It was very interesting to see how uh, the BRICS, BRICS countries are uh, leading with material science and the nanotechnology. We had an excellent opportunity to see, uh, to see how we can cooperate with each other and see potential research groups to interact. And because of this, we consider from our side that yesterday we had a very productive day. Uh, yesterday in the afternoon part, only for us that we are presently here in Manaus, we had the opportunity to visit, to visit the industrial part of Manaus. So we went to two companies, uh, two companies here in the industrial part of Manaus. We had the opportunity to uh, watch yesterday a uh, local performance in the Opera House of Manaus, that it's a very beautiful uh, house here in, in Manaus. I hope that in the next opportunity we, we can share with all of you these, these opportunities. So far today, we have a, a very interesting day. The first part is dedicated to uh, the other, other presentations that we don't have the opportunity to see yesterday. And after this, we have a moment to the Russian, uh, Russian delegates present a little bit more about the web page, network logo, and activities related to, the, to our activities. We have a part dedicated to the review of priority areas for the next BRICS joint call. And after this, we have, we have a part dedicated to discuss a little bit about our next working group meeting. We have two, two candidates, China and South, South Africa, so thank you very much in advance for these candidatures. And so we will final, finalize our meeting with uh, the final remarks. I'd like to mention that the, the meeting minutes uh, are almost done, the first draft, and we consider that will be the best if you uh, circulate or send by mail to all delegates to contributions and you can finalize, finalize after, after our meeting. Okay, so our first, our, our first, first speaker is Professor Chris Arenzi. Professor, Professor Chris Arenzi is an expert on in energy nanomaterials from South Africa. So Professor Chris, it's a, it's a pleasure to have, have you with us and the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, good afternoon. Good afternoon, colleagues in South Africa, and good morning to our colleagues in the other countries. Um, so I am from the University of the Western Cape, which is in Cape Town, um, uh, and I am from the Department of Physics and Astronomy. And in our department, uh, we have uh, several research groups, uh, of which uh, uh, condensed matter physics is one, uh, in, in which I am part of. We also have um, uh, a, a nuclear physics um, a research group, and we are strongly aligned with the uh, uh, SKA, which is uh, the, the astrophysics um, uh, um, uh, happening uh, in, in, in South Africa. 
And then we also have a research group in physics education. So just to give you some background into to what we do in our department. So I'm just gonna share my screen. Um, Okay, I hope that you can see that. Okay, so yes, as I said, I'm from the Department of Physics and Astronomy at UWC, and the research group that I uh, lead is the hybrid CVD materials for electronic applications, and and we have a very strong collaborations with with uh, several national institutions, but also internationally, uh, in, in particular with the University of Missouri in the USA. So. Um, yeah, so um, the, the purpose of my presentation is just to give you some background into the chemical vapor deposition work that we do for uh, photovoltaic materials, and it's specifically related to the um, hybrid organic, inorganic perovskite materials. So uh, as an introduction, uh, the, the hybrid perovskite solar cells are considered a major um, breakthrough in photovoltaics over the last few years over the last decade at least. And in 2009, back then, the uh, power conversion efficiency that was uh, reported was at 3.8%. And that uh, resulted, well, there was a huge jump in efficiency to more than 25% in 2020. And I need to note that this is for a single junction um, uh, uh, solar cell. Now this improved efficiency, as, as we know, is due to several of the excellent properties of, of these materials. It's the high carrier mobility, the long range diffusion uh, length. And then uh, what is good about this material is it's high absorption coefficient. And the fact that we can also tune the band gap quite easily just by uh, doping. Um, other applications, and we've also now started to look at fuel detect um, transistors. There's also LED applications and photo detectors and some other sensors. So um, this curve here from NRL just illustrates, uh, if you zoom into this area here, it just illustrates exactly where the efficiency is now. So it's more than 25%. Um, then in terms of synthesis, so the, the, the one way to produce this would be at low temperature and using spin coating techniques. You can, all, you can also do it with thermal deposition and chemical vapor deposition. And all of these methods, in all of them, you can do it in a single step, two steps, and you can even uh, do it uh, in parts. You know, Maybe the first step you do um, spin coating and then CVD afterwards. Now, uh, this is just um, uh, summarizing the spin coating uh, procedure, which is quite straightforward. And then we have the vapor deposition, which is your ultra high vacuum systems, and then this is an example of a chemical vapor deposition system, but in one run, actually in a one-step deposition using CVD. Um, so the challenges with this material, as, as we know, is, the is, the, is this material suffers from stability issues, specifically when exposed to moisture, high temperature, and UV. And this is mostly related to the material properties, so the grain sizes, the crystallinity, and the others. There's also the issue of lead toxicity. So there's lots of research having been done in that area. Also, uh, during cell operation, the, um, uh, uh, the performance is not stable. There's also scale-up issues, uh, which is the major problem. And then device, uh, devices not working as they should uh, when you scale them up. So as you can see, there's a need for a scalable technique for the deposition of the stable hybrid, uh, hybrid Roskite materials that is compatible with the methods that we currently use in the semiconductor industry. In other words, we, requ we require large grain sizes, full surface coverage and improved morphology while maintaining a high throughput on large substrates. And chemical vapor deposition provides that platform. So um, just a, a basic background into what CBD is. It's a mature, low-cost, controllable, and efficient technology used in the semiconductor industry. It's a method to produce solid products from the gas phase and is composed of typically your gas supply unit, your deposition chamber, and then you have deposition temperature control with vacuums and pressure control units and so forth. 
And basically, you can activate this process by either doing it thermally, you can use plasma uh, uh, sources, you can even use a hot wire filament, there's also microwave CBD and some other variations there are. So the important stages during the growth of, of materials with CBD is what type of precursor mixture you have, the secondary reactions after you have dissociation, surface reactions, and then home growth. And this is typically your, your, your CBD systems, and, and these are examples of what we have in, 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 in our department. So this is a system that we've set up here specifically for the growth of the perovskite thin films. This is a hot wire CBD chamber, uh, one of our very old um, uh, systems in the department, but still operational. And then also plasma enhanced uh, CBD, which we also host in our department. So, uh, yeah, so uh, uh, the CBD systems we have in our department. So this is a new uh, thermal CBD system that we've set up recently. Um, but this is a system that's been funded by our national government, the National Research um, uh, Foundation, the NRF, um, as part of the Nanotechnology Equipment Program. And this system is composed of five chambers, as you can see by the numbers there. And what we can deposit in these systems is anything from a silicon-based uh, thin film to um, even perovskite thin films. Uh, we, we have two plasma enhanced CBD chambers there, two hot wire chambers, a metal deposition chamber, and they are all connected uh, through ultra high vacuum in a transport chamber. There's also the load lock on the side. And in our lab, we have uh, safety protocols in place for um, silane gases, phosphines, hydrogen, and other gases. So um, this is the, uh, the, the system that we uh, use. And then also, um, we, we, we also have a, a larger system, which can accommodate subset sizes of up to uh, 10 by 10 uh, square centimeters, which is in the background here, and that was donated uh, by Utrecht University. Um, yeah, so that's basically a summary of what we have. And we have a nice picture with our rector and some of my uh, master's students there. So in terms of the equipment that we have in the department, as I mentioned, we have hot wire, CVD, and low pressure CVD systems. We have photovoltaic and thin film uh, TFT uh, preparation instrumentation in the department. We can do the device testing and performances. We have high resolution electron microscopes in our electron microscope unit, uh, which is in our department as well. Through our chemistry department, we have access to a variety of spectroscopic techniques from Raman to photoluminescence, etc. Then also Itemba Lab, which is about 20 kilometers away from, from uh, our institution, so it's an easy drive there. We also have access to ion beam analysis facilities like Rutherford backscattering, elastic recoil detection, and, then, uh, and also Pixie. And then also we have a, a strong collaboration with the National Metrology Institute on the CSIR campus in Victoria where we have access to um, high-end techniques. So uh, just to uh, briefly talk about some of the results, so, so what we've managed to do with a very simple CVDs uh, uh, setup is to deposit um, uh, uh, these uh, perovskite solar cells with an improved efficiency, and that was uh, published last year. And basically, this is the system. So you have your, your quartz tube uh, reactor for the furnace. And then basically we work at pressures in the range of millibars, so it's not it's really very, uh, not too low of a pressure, more of close to atmospheric pressure. And we've managed to optimize this system to, to produce stable perovskite thin films. And uh, most of the work that we did there was, um, uh, well, at least some of the work was related to the to understanding the, 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 the energy flow in the system, the, fluid dynamics there are and, and so forth. And these are examples of the films that we deposited and the position protocols that, that we used. And for the solar cells, we've also looked at the uh, underlying growth mechanism of the material and we managed to, 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 to understand and, and optimize that. And uh, finally, uh, by producing solar cells, um, uh, so basically sandwiching your perovskite between a whole transport and the electron transport layers. 
we ended up with efficiencies uh, of about 12%. So this was our first solar cell. And this was all in air, which is very important to note. All in air, no glove boxes being used. The samples were stored in a drawer in the lab. Um, no glove boxes, nothing. And we managed to retain about 80%, a bit more than 80% of the initial efficiency of in open air up to 21 days. So that has been quite an improvement. And what we've also managed to do is also to do some doping. So we've added some uh, um, uh, uh, chlorine to this to, to produce the mixed halide. And that also, uh, so in this case, we used a three-step method. Uh, and through the formation of a lead uh, PBI CL phase, we managed to produce a stable um, mixed halide form as well. And that also resulted in an improved efficiency. And um, so uh, this is the work that we've done uh, up until last year, and we've now moved on to reducing the lead by adding tin uh, to, to the mixture using CBD and also look at upscaling of the device. So this is the, the, the basics of the project that we are working on, and we are also developing some new optical techniques in-house to study the charge transport mechanism, and this is where our collaboration with the University of Missouri uh, is important. So that's just in a nutshell, and, and we are, are, are definitely uh, looking for collaboration opportunities with our BRICS partners for this specific project. And uh, before I end, I'd just like to acknowledge the institution, so the University of Western Cape, University of Missouri, our National Research Foundation, and also arms for uh, uh, in South Africa for the for, for the funding of the, the, the um, furnaces and some of the characterization of them. And then uh, on the final note, I also want to add that we also host, or we are the hub for the National Nanoscience Postgraduate Teaching and Training Platform, where we offer master's degrees in either um, uh, nanophysics, nanochemistry, or nano. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Professor Arenzi. It was very exciting to see how South Africa is working on science and technology, especially uh, on the material science and nanotechnology. I would like to request if, if you have questions from our delegates. I have one question. If you could comment a little bit more about this platform, which kind of information it's, pos it's possible to access, how we can collaborate with it, and if so, if you could comment, I would really appreciate if you could comment it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, when you talk about the platform, are you referring to the teaching platform? Uh, is that, okay. Um, so the teaching platform, it's a, it's a collaborative uh, program, master's degree program that is offered between the University of Western Cape. We have three, uh, the University of Free State, we have Nelson Mandela University and also University of Johannesburg. So it's a national teaching program and actually one of its kind in, in South Africa. We also have a similar program for the, the astrophysics. But, uh, so, so this one is specifically focused on nanoscience. So it's funded by our Department of Science and Innovation, and it's a master's level program. So for access into this program, you would need an honors degree. Uh, so it's, you know, we, we have our, in South Africa, we have an undergraduate degree followed by an honors degree, and then you would move on to the master's program. So um, uh, what is important about this program is that it's a two year, program nine, the first nine months of that is focused on uh, uh, teaching. So we would have our students travel across the country uh, to all of these institutions to be taught uh, in terms of the theory component. And the next 15 months, they would go to their host institutions and do their research program. Now, this program also has an international component to it in terms of the students uh, so we, we also have international lecturers coming to South Africa to participate and teach in this program. And students also on occasion go 
to the international labs as, as I do with some of them to the University of Missouri. I see this as a definite uh, opportunity for collaboration as well in terms of the the, 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 the different, uh, program. I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you very much, Professor Renzi. And it's easy to see that in the future we can think about an uh, initiative like this uh, for our BRICS working group because uh, we have a, a, a very interesting opportunity in this, in this field. So thank you very much once again. And I would like to invite our next speaker, Professor Gugu Molongo, an expert on nanotechnology for food from South Africa too. So Professor, Professor Molongo, the floor is yours. Professor, you need to open your microphone. Uh, do, do, you, uh, do you like to share on a, pre a presentation too or not? We are not listen to you. We can see you, but we can't hear you. Hear you. Hear you. Hear you. Hear you. Yeah. Yes, my name is Kukum Shong right. from the CSIR. I, I hope I'm audible now. Um, uh, from the center or from the center uh, for nanostructured and advanced materials. Uh, a couple of colleagues have presented uh, before me from the same center. So uh, today on my talk, on my talk, I'll be talking about a very interesting topic, which is nanotechnology for food safety. So whereby uh, we are all aware now, like in terms of the opportunities that nanotechnology in terms of improvement of food quality and uh, during processing or during food processing, as well as a production of packages with new enhanced thermal and mechanical properties and safety. However, now what is very important and interesting, now we are now seeing Another new aspect whereby we're looking at uh, nanosensors being used uh, for food safety and quality control, whereby they are used as early food uh, spoilage uh, detection or indicators. And also we can have these nanosensor, nanosensors embedded to develop what is called smart and intelligent uh, packaging. So now if I can take you through um, what we do uh, in terms of the research activities uh, within the center amongst various uh, group uh, or research groups, we have what is called a guest sensor group, which uh, mainly or whereby uh, our, our, our main uh, focus is in, in terms of developing gas nanosensors, whereby we focusing really to mainly use them in various applications like you, for environmental monitoring, for health and also and uh, now also uh, which is a new area that is, has been really newly developed which is food safety so like in terms of nanosensors for health the main focus in this platform uh, is really to develop gas sensors or gas sensor devices that um uh, that can, that are used to analyze the breath considering the fact that our breath carries a lot of information in terms of the status of our health so now the team in this, uh, in this platform has developed uh, uh, the so-called diabetes breath analyzer, whereby uh, 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 in terms of its development stage, it is really now being adopted 
by one of the commercial uh, partners locally. So it's very, it's, 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 it has developed really, and it's, it's making a very good uh, impression in terms of uh, what this uh, group uh, can do in terms of developing these technologies. So I, I also have also shown a chip, an FET chip that uh, we have we have also developed or developed by this platform, which is patented, patented in various uh, uh, countries, including America, China, and so on. So now looking at nanosensors for environment, we also uh, in this platform, what we, our strong point is really. Uh, we are working closely with local manufacturers of uh, gas sensors or local uh, sensor uh, sensing or commercial uh, guys who are, com who, are, who are selling or distributing gas sensors in South Africa, whereby we're looking at um, the main aspect is uh, to have these sensors utilized in the mining industry. Uh, look, with regards to nanosensors for food safety, this, like I indicated earlier, this is a, a, a platform that was developed in, uh, in 2019, following a couple of incidents that have occurred in the food uh, industry in terms, of, on, in terms of food product recalls. Like, I mean, uh, really uh, what inspired this uh, uh, platform really, um, or, or the main motivation for the formation of this platform really is uh, the incident that, that we experienced in South Africa due to the Listeria, which, which was called Listeria outbreak whereby a number of people lo lost their lives. About 204 people died as a result of this a, a, a food poisoning incident, whereby people, when they consumed the, 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 the polonies, they, they got sick, others got hospitalized, others really lost their lives. So that was really, really an unfortunate incident. And not only the loss of human life is a key or a, a, a main issue here in the food industry, but also the costs that are, are associated with these food recall incidents. They, in terms of the brand, like myself, I don't even look at those colonies or the brand that uh, that resulted to the of, uh, of a number of people. So, so really, with the, all these incidents, like even now in the past two weeks, we also had another food recall, uh, the, the liquid or whatever, the fruit industry, uh, to recall their juices. And the reason being, the mycotoxins were present on those, uh, uh, on those food ju uh, juices. So you can see that there is a huge need, not only in South Africa, but I would assume with other con uh, countries as well. They are, I mean, they are experiencing a lot of food poisoning and, in uh, uh, and all also a, a, a lot of food loss incidents as a result of a, a, the, 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 the quality status of the food that we consume as consumers. So now, and hence now, we need technologies that can really uh, solve these uh, problems in terms of um, uh, alerting the, the industry uh, players uh, in, as well as consumers in terms of, uh, uh, of the quality of the food product that they consume as well as preventing a number of economic losses, as I highlighted uh, earlier, as well as also, like in terms of a, a, a tracking the food product while it's in transit, it can be if, 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 either locally or even if it's, it's shipped abroad. So the, the, those are key issues. I mean, those are, the, 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 and hence I'm saying we definitely need technologies that can assist us uh, in improving the, the, the uh, oh, in, in a way to support or complement the technologies that are used in terms of food testing uh, out there. So now, and hence now, uh, gas nanosensors really are uh, in a better position to assist or to offer th those kind of, uh, 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 or can offer such uh, 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 services to the, uh, to, 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 to the industry or to the food industry, mainly because they, they can be produced in small, or small sizes, then also in terms of reliability and as well as sensitivity and sensitivity. And most of all, um, most of the companies that are distributing gas sensors in South Africa, they are not uh, locally based. So if we enhance, we need uh, locally uh, produced sensors and I mean, which really puts us on a, a better space or position. 
uh, in terms of the market, if you look at the market really to show that there is a huge demand for gas sensors in, in the whole world, uh, in terms of the compound annual growth rate, the, ex, it is ex, the, the, the gas sensor market is expected to grow and reach about $1 billion by 2023. That really shows that there is a huge need. And also, like looking at the wide applications, like now we are now having these being famous now uh, in, in the food industry or food sector and as well as agriculture. So they are really coming very strongly in that aspect. I mean, uh, we, previously, the main focus, the main areas that uh, these sens sensors have been applied to have been in uh, industry, like, I mean, environmental monitoring, and we started to also see them being famous in the health sector. Now we are now starting to see them being really, really uh, coming uh, strong in the food and agricultural sector. So, and I mean, I, when we use these nanosensors in the food industry, I mean, in terms of uh, the, 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 the offering, as I highlighted earlier, we are um, all the most of all, almost all the food products. And when they decompose, they release some certain chemicals. They, they, they release some certain gases and, uh, and uh, various volatile organic compounds. So now, those uh, uh, gases, or those chemicals that they release, then uh, they, for us, they, they indicate that uh, something is happening within the food itself. The activities in most cases are microbial. And then when they are getting stronger and they just maybe they produce fungi, and when such processes are happening in the food product, then we normally, they will then they will then release various cases like your, your, in the case of your grains we are targeting the the carbon dioxide it's a main gas that is being released and then uh, when this gas is released it indicates to us that something is happening on that particular food, food product then when the levels improve or the concentration of the co2 increases then they to us they indicate that no uh, this product is suitable for consumption or now you just have to discuss that discard that food product so now uh, in that area uh, in the in, in, in the in within the platform the gas the nano sensor nano sensors for food safety platform we are focusing in various uh, we are looking into two various focus areas uh, one extended shelf life that's when now we're looking into mitigating spoilage conditions that by extending shelf life and minimize food waste. So this is when now we embed the gas and nano sensors into, into, into uh, packaging materials and develop smart and uh, intelligent uh, 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 systems. The second one is the food safety whereby really we're looking at having these sensors to, to, to early detect spoilage in various food products as I indicated uh, uh, earlier on. So this is a uh, very important because now uh, we, it can assist really in uh, uh, preventing a number of outbreaks that we are experiencing in our country. And also um, uh, the last one, the key one also is food tracking and monitoring, which really addresses the issue, of, which uh, aims uh, at addressing the issue of traceability. So now what you, uh, with, the, with nanosensors, what, uh, what they do, like, I mean, uh, as, 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 a, as a producer, as a food producer, you will be alerted uh, in terms of uh, uh, the quality of your, or the status of your food while your food is in transit. I mean, whereby now the sensors can tell you maybe the conditions have changed, the humidity levels are, dif are different now. I mean, that will assist you really. I mean, if you're shipping a food product to Japan, it will still reach in the same, I mean, you maintain, you, you, you will be informed in terms of, of the status of that food product, in terms of whether the quality is no longer good or, so that's, that's enhanced now, it's important to really have devices that can assist in, in terms of food taking and monitoring. And then now, uh, our strong points is the is the is, 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 is a team or is a sensor group uh, within the, the within CSIR. Um, we focusing on wide um, in terms of manipulation of the nano materials now because our strong point is into development of uh, 
uh, uh, active sensing layers of sensor elements that are being utilized in, 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 in sensors. So uh, what, whereby we manipulate, we can manipulate the morphology and produce the so-called zero dimensional um, uh, nanostructures, one dimensional nanostructures, two dimensional nanostructures and flowers and cubes, different kinds. So now, uh, in terms of improving the 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 the, 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 um, the the properties like the sensor characteristics, with regards to the selectivity and having them to really operate at low uh, at low operating temperatures, that's to to solve the issue of power consumption, uh, and also uh, uh, as well as the the if you really uh, in, in terms of having your sensors to operate in the food in the food space and even uh, to, 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 to analyze the breath, humidity becomes a very, very serious issue. So we need to have a sensor that can operate, it, operate in such harsh condi conditions. So now, so we are able to manipulate all of this and, uh, and optimize our sensor layers by uh, either introducing the, the noble metals or transition metals and and also develop the so-called mixed oxides by having maybe the PN junctions and NP types and, and NP junctions, as well as um, we also make ternary structures like your spinels and peroxides, as well as metal organic frameworks like your cobaltites and different kinds. So those are our, our, our very strong uh, 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 capabilities in terms of really uh, uh, adopting uh, or improving the sensor characteristics because that's very, very important uh, because now commercially we understand the challenges that the commercial uh, sensors are, are, are having. So now we had to come up with the approaches that, we, uh, that can address the challenges that the, 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 the field of sensors is, is currently uh, experiencing. So now in terms of uh, the methods we use various methods, both physics, physical methods as well as physical methods. Uh, my colleague presented, uh, um, did mention, uh, I mean, oh, had a number of techniques that we are hosting in the center. So, uh, 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 so we do. We, we have a lot of expertise in terms of uh, developing the nanometers. Consider, I mean, uh, including the characterization as well as testing. And I mean, uh, we, 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 we deposit our, 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 our layers, our sensing, sensitive layers in two, in, 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 in two platforms. Uh, we have an FET, FET chip that uh, I indicate, uh, I highlighted earlier that, uh, that we, we have uh, made, uh, as well as uh, we also use the TO4 uh, socket or header uh, to, 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 to really, have these uh, uh, sensor elements. So now after this, it's very easy to now integrate them into a device and then uh, and be able to um, have uh, these, uh, 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 in, uh, oh, I mean, uh, in the market, or oh, I mean, have them being adopted by our local uh, uh, manufacturers as uh, it has been the case for the bread analyzer. I think that is my story and I will end it there. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Professor Gugu Manlogu for your very interesting presentation and achievements. And I would like to ask our, deleg our delegates if you have questions and the other delegates too. We have a question here from Professor Caio. Thank you very much, Professor Gugu. It's really nice to see your progress on packaging materials. So we have a lot of concern uh, with the fate, with the environmental fate of the packaging material, because you have a lot of single use packaging and the stuff that is designed to be discarded after use. But I can see that the packaging you're proposing has a very important role in food preservation. So I'm just wondering how to deal with the fate, environmental fate, when you have, besides the matrix, you also have uh, circuits, antennas, sensing devices, and batteries. So how to do with it? And also the cost. Would it be you know, uh, prohibitive for commercial application, 
or do you think it's possible to overcome this hurdle? Thank you very much. Uh, my network uh, went bad a little bit. I, I, I could not get the whole question. If you don't mind, do you mind, do you mind if you can repeat the question for me, please? My network, I mean, had a hiccup somehow. Okay, can you hear me now? Okay, so I was wondering, what is your opinion on the practical applicability of the packaging when you have embedded, you know, these compounds that may, uh, really may drive difficulties in discarding the materials? So, for instance, when you have a sensing device, you may have antenna, a battery, uh, the sensor itself. So how to deal with the environmental fate? Where to go after use? That's the main point. After the, oh, okay, we, we do a, a clinical trials, like for instance, with the, with the breath analyzer. It has been tested, it has, the clinical trials were done before, and we, we, we also get in the approvals. So before we, 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 we have, or we, we, we have these, uh, the, these devices commercially available, there are a couple of trials that we, uh, we, go, we go through. And then um, obviously in terms of uh, 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 the advancement of the, the platforms that we are using, like we have the chip, we have the, these uh, deposited on chips and with their couple again, before we even um, uh, integrate these into devices, there are a couple of tests that we, we run. We have also even the National Institute of Metrology, the, 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 the National Metrology Institute of South Africa having to even validate this uh, for us before we move further. And we also do calibration tests and everything. So um, obviously in terms of advancement, the technologies, they, they, they move very faster. Like even the platforms that you are using, uh, depending on the application, again, uh, like I said, for food, we, the, what is famous now is your enos, and we are also uh, looking into uh, tapping that area as well. But I mean, so far, like in terms of the test we run is uh, before the, the integration of this uh, into the electronics. And even after, if you have a device, we go to like, for instance, in the case of food, we are engaging a, lot, a number of um, a, 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 a relevant uh, industry, like in food, food manufacturers or food uh, producers, so that we can have our sense devices in terms of that real-time testing uh, being uh, uh, utilized in their space, which is part of uh, the testing process before uh, we get a final approval. Thank you very much. Congratulations, and I'm eager to see it on the shelf. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Caio, Professor Gugu Manlogo, for on your presentation. And our next speaker is Professor Oleg Kashanov, Director of the Center Nanomaterials and Nanotechnology National Research Tonsky Polytechnic University from Russia. Professor Kashanov, the floor is yours. Chairman, hello, dear participants of this uh, very important and impressive event uh, in the frame of the working group of the, on the material science and non-technology of BRICS countries. And uh, let me introduce you to our uh, university uh, and the Nano Center of Tom's Polytechnic University. I would like to show you our presentation. Uh -huh. Um, I represent uh, National Research Tomsk Polytechnic University from Russia. Uh, 
it is the, uh, and I am head of uh, Nanocentre of our university. And this is the center for shared use uh, in the research and engineering infrastructure of Russian Federation. Uh, Tomsk Polytechnic University was founded uh, 125 years ago. It, it is the first high technical educational institution in the Asian part of Russia. Uh, first in Russia, our university was certified by the Global Alliance for Transnational Education in 90s years and assessed and reg registered by National Quality Assurance. Uh, now, uh, our university is a member of the International Ex Association of Leading Universities, education, uh, educational and business organization like Cluster, and I, European Network for Accreditation of Engineering Education, uh, uh, which provides the EROACE label, the European Quality label for engineering degree of bachelor and master programs. Uh, also, our university is a uh, member of the Huawei Authorized Information and Network Academy, etc. Um, uh, Tom's Politic University has a um, uh, leading positions in the uh, QS uh, ranking, uh, TH. E ranking in the engineering, petroleum, engineering and technology, physical sciences uh, subjects, and in the uh, mechanical engineering, uh, due um, owing to Forbes uh, um, ranking, uh, we have seventh position uh, in the uh, among 100 best Russian university and first position among uh, higher educational institutes in Siberia. Uh, because of our university's polytechnic, uh, we uh, have uh, uh, several uh, engineering schools uh, on nuclear science, non-destructive testing, testing, computer science and robotics, uh, energy and power engineering, uh, School of Earth Sciences and Engineering, uh, including Geology uh, and uh, Petroleum Engineering, and School of Advanced Manufacturing Technologies uh, uh, with Division for Material Science and Nanotechnologies. Uh, it is important that our university is international university uh, because of uh, we uh, invited and uh, uh, we, we invited. Uh, the students from many countries, and now uh, 20, around 28 persons of, stu of international students um, are studying in our university. Uh, TPU uh, has 90 contracts with overseas universities on implementation of academic mobility programs. Uh, I would like to emphasize uh, that uh, my talk is not a research and development uh, report, it is just introduction uh, for uh, our infrastructure and for our activity. Uh, so, uh, Nana Centre of Tom's Polytechnic University is a participant of the research and engineering infrastructure of Russian Federation, and uh, our scientific services uh, are based on the research and engineering competences which we uh, obtained during our activity uh, since uh, 1980, uh, so more than 40 years. Uh, we study uh, the structure, uh, hierarchy and mechanical optical properties of nanostructured materials, bulk nonstructured materials, and we carried out the development we carry out development and manufacturing of bulk functional and structural nanoceramics, nanocomposites, and the parts uh, with required shapes using uh, methods of dry nano and micron scale powders compaction. Uh, these methods uh, are patented uh, and <clears throat> they describe the shaping under powerful ultrasound assistance and by the collector method. And also now we use spark plasma sintering uh, to uh, consolidate nanostructured bulk uh, functional and structural materials. Um, 
two newer methods uh, for shaping of nanopowders have been developed and patented. There are pressing under powerful ultrasound resistance and pressing by the collector method. Uh, these methods uh, <clears throat> we applied in processing of various functional and structural ceramics and composites, oxides, uh, oxide uh, ceramics, non-oxide ceramics, uh, uh, some kinds of uh, uh, metal matrix composites and the ceramic matrix composites. Uh, there are functional ceramics for transparent, cere for transparent materials like yttria doped with uh, rare earth uh, components. Electroceramics based on the barium strontium titanates uh, and um, uh, barium titanated titan uh, and titanium tungstenate. Um, Zirconium borite, aluminum nitride is a um, dielectric and, super, uh, and uh, thermal conductive materials. Uh, reflective uh, high temperature ceramics, boron carbide, silicon carbide, uh, also transparent ceramics uh, based on the yttrium aluminum garnet uh, and uh, some uh, structures of uh, yttrium oxide doped with uh, other uh, several kinds of uh, them. Uh, activators of luminescence. Uh, this is uh, also the metal matrix composite for radiation shielding of electronics for spacecraft and other uh, radiation uh, in the, in the um, uh, radiation um, hazards industry. Um, also, it is important uh, the uh, study and development of um, semiconductive uh, ceramics like indium tin oxide and zinc oxide, magnetic ceramics, samarium, iron, nitrate, ni nitrate and so on. Also, uh, we have uh, experience for development of high temperature superconductors based on the cuprates of yttrium barium, barium strontium, and sorry, bis bis bismuth strontium, calcium cuprate, bismuth strontium, calcium cuprates with different uh, various concentrations of the components. Uh, methods for compacting of uh, nanopowders uh, uh, of powders uh, and to shape the articles from powders uh, have, uh, have been patented in Russia, in USA. Uh, we have Eurasian patent, Ukraine, pa Ukraine patent, Korean patent, uh, Euro patent in Germany, France, and Italy, and uh, Indian patent uh, was uh, issued. Uh, in 2014. Uh, briefly, uh, I can say that uh, we have experience for development of um, uh, an application of functional and structural ceramics, composites, and parts uh, for, uh, as a transparent ceramics in visible and infrared range, armor ceramics, lightweight radiation shielding composite for electronics protection, High temperature superconductive ceramics, uh, piezoferroelectric ceramics, thermal conductive dielectric ceramics, magnetic ceramics, and other kinds of functional ceramics. To develop and uh, to study uh, these kinds of uh, bulk, function, uh, bulk functional uh, ceramics and composites, we created uh, the uh, pilot uh, processing line. Uh, to manufacture, uh, to manufacture such parts from bulk uh, nanomaterials. Uh, this pilot processing line includes uh, the equipment and devices for synthesis analysis of nanopowders, then to compact of dry nano and polydispersive powders. Um, um, after this, we can analyze uh, the properties uh, of green compacts and then uh, to uh, choose the ways for optimal sintering consolidation of such uh, such uh, bulk ceramics and composites using spark plasma sintering and uh, free sintering in vacuum and in the uh, uh, air uh, atmosphere. And uh, finally, uh, we can provide testing of articles using nano hardness meters testers uh, using uh, high temperature gelatometers, micro hardness and Testers, uh, testing machines for uh, testing of mechanical properties like bending strange and so on. Of course, uh, we can uh, we use the uh, uh, methods of uh, 
microstructure analysis by the transmission electron microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, XRD analysis, atomic force microscopy, and so on. Uh, our developments um, are based on the simulation and the prediction of the some structural and, and uh, properties, structure properties of the development materials. Uh, for these purposes, we use the special software. Uh, here you can see uh, the, um, why, uh, the list of our equipment for analysis of nanopowders, green compacts, and ceramics. Uh, which I told uh, above. Uh, also, the um, equipment for synthesis of nanopowders using uh, spray dryer uh, to analyze the specific surface of materials, uh, microstructure of the surface uh, by the atomic force and scanning probe microscopy. Uh, ultra picnometer we use to study and to, um, to de determine the porosity or, or open porosity of nanomaterials. Um, for compaction of nanopowders, we use uh, tools uh, for the ultrasonic pressing and collector pressing, uh, including ultrasonic generators, commercial ultrasonic generators, uh, and uh, presses, uh, conventional presses uh, for uniaxial loading of the powders. Um, also, we designed and uh, uh, made the installation for dry magnetic powder compaction and the combined field assistance, powerful ultrasound and magnetic field. Uh, for sintering, we used spark plasma sintering machine and uh, uh, furnaces uh, to sinter in vacuum in the, in the, in the air uh, environment uh, conditions. For testing, I told we use a uh, nanopower meter uh, testing machine for bending strange and for um, the uh, uh, micro hardness tester, nano hardness tester, and so on. And also, I told about the special software to simulate uh, the properties and microstructure of the materials. Our international cooperation with the BRIC countries. Uh, uh, as the following examples, a cooperation with Chongqing University of Arts and Science, uh, we carry out joint R&D uh, project of, for development of optical transparent luminescent ceramics, semiconductive uh, zinc oxide and ITO ceramics. Uh, we carry out a uh, research exchange program and uh, double degree pro program to uh, train uh, bachelors uh, on nanomaterials and to train master uh, masters on nanomaterials. Uh, other partners uh, are Henan University of Science and Technology from Luoyang, China, Shanghai Institute for, of Ceramics of the Chinese Academy of Science, and the University of Petroleum and Energy Studies uh, in India. Uh, as for other our international partners, uh, there are Nissan Motor Corporation, Frankhofer uh, Institute of uh, Ceramics Technologies and Systems, uh, University of Joseph Fourier. Now this is it, it is the University of Grenoble Alps. Uh, uh, we carry out uh, the joint uh, double degree PhD program and double degree master program, master in nanoscience and nanotechnologies in the frame of the Erasmus Plus program. Uh, other uh, partners from uh, Europe uh, are the Institute for Photonics and Nanotechnology Trento, uh, Italy, Institute of Science and Technology of Ceramics from Italy. Uh, as for USA, uh, we have the relationships with San Diego State University, a laboratory of powder technology uh, of this university. Uh, we uh, in, we successfully implemented the uh, joint project in the frame of the uh, grant of the International Science and Technology Center. Uh, and our internet industrial partner was um, Yen uh, Optics AG from Germany. 
and we have closed relationships with the University of Ulsan. Uh, this university uh, belongs to Hyundai Corporation uh, in South Korea. Uh, regarding Russian partners, uh, we have the part, uh, such famous partners as Rusnana Corporation, uh, Rusatom Corporation as um, one of the um, enterprise of such uh, corporation, Siberian Chemical Plant. National Research Center, Kurchatov Institute, Kotelnikov Institute of Radio Engineering Electroni and Electronics and Moscow in Frazino. Uh, our current industrial partner is the Moe Ceramic Implantate. This is the um, uh, um, resident of Tomsk Special Economic Zone, uh, which uh, uh, is established uh, uh, in cooperation with the Moe company from Germany. Uh, also, we have the joint project with Mendeleev University of Chemical Technology from Moscow, Merzhanov Institute of Structural Macrokinetics and Material Science, Russian Academy of Science from Chernogolov. Uh, our main joint results and recent publications, you can see at this slide, uh, um, this is just recent publications uh, this year and uh, last year um, in the uh, um, journals having the quarter one range uh, regarding uh, development of opti optical transparent luminescent ceramics and regarding lightweight metal ceramic composites. Uh, here you can see uh, the examples of our participation, uh, of our regular participations in the International uh, Congress on Ceramics uh, organized by the international uh, by the um, international ceramic foundation uh, this is the uh, uh, our participation in the uh, organizing committee on transparent and luminescent materials uh, in 2016 uh, participation in the uh, organizing committee of Sintrin 2017 uh, also uh, we took part in the 7th International Congress uh, uh, on ceramics in Brazil uh, three years ago. Uh, we delivered uh, invited talks, invited talks in the Pierce uh, Conference uh, two years ago in Rome uh, and in the uh, uh, conference on the uh, modern technologies uh, uh, in Thailand uh, two years ago, where the plenary speaker was uh, Professor Sumir Ijima, uh, who was mentioned in the talk uh, by the Dr. Uh, Li Si from China yesterday. Uh, and also it was the very impressive uh, conference, uh, international conference. Uh, we are, member of the uh, of the organizing committee uh, of the symposium on inorganic material system for advanced photonics uh, which will be uh, organized in Italy next year so thank you very much for your attention Tom's Polytechnic University is open for cooperation within the framework of BRICS working group on material science and nanotechnology uh, and uh, uh, we uh, would like to continue our cooperation in the frame our uh, following uh, following uh, discussions and uh, uh, conversations. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Professor Kashanov, for your uh, exciting presentation and all your achievements. And I would like to open for question. I would like to stimulate uh, our delegates to uh, write your questions on our chat too. So if you want to uh, ask by the, ch the chat, it's possible too. I have a, we have a question here from, the, from Professor Maximiliano. Uh, hello, Professor Kazanov. Thank you very much for your exciting presentation. We can see that your university is very hard, very very active. I would like to ask you 
to make some comments about a topic, a special topic on fabrication. It's about the ad addictive manufacturing. How are you uh, work on this? How are you planning? Because I, I could not see, at least here, uh, uh, some, some details about that. And you know that this is a very important topic. I hope that you are involved also. And I would like to, to ask a little, to some comments about that. Thank you. Yes, uh, you are quite right. The additive manufacturing is a uh, uh, very promising uh, way to, uh, uh, to shape the articles from uh, some kinds of materials. Um, and we use such uh, technologies, uh, such additive manufacturing to, um, uh, to design and to create, to, to make, to, make uh, to, to do the, uh, uh, the prototypes uh, of our um, molds, our molds for shaping of materials, and then to, um, to develop uh, some um, new uh, kinds of articles having complicated shapes. Uh, but uh, the sintering, the high temperature ceramics, especially nanostructured ceramics, using the additive manufacturing meet uh, a lot of problems. And now such problems should be uh, solved uh, by the following developments. And uh, it is no uh, the um, solutions of, of all questions now. And we think about this. Thank you. And just now, I would like to suggest that we should include this issue in our agenda for next uh, discussion and work, uh, a collaborative work. Thank you. Thank you very much again, Professor Kachanov and Professor Maximiliano for your very interesting comments and contributions. So I would like to invite our next speaker Professor Simon Dalami from uh, South Africa. Professor Simon is an expert on luminescent nanomaterials. Are you with us? I think, I think no, it's not connected. So let's invite our next speaker, Professor Eiki Ganguli, Deputy Director in, in New Delhi, India. Professor Ganguli, uh, Professor Ganguli, you can now take over. Professor, you can see you, but we can't hear you. So if you, if you can open your, your microphone. We are not hearing you yet.
just a moment for everybody. Professor uh, Ganguly is accessing again. Am I audible now? Am I audible now? I... Yes. yes sir. We can hear you now. Okay, so I am from the IIT Delhi, which is the Indian Institute of Technology Delhi, uh, which is based at New Delhi. And I am in the Department of Chemistry, also Department of Material Science and Engineering. And uh, my area is uh, basically design of nanostructured materials, working on uh, photocatalysis, water splitting, hydrogen generation, and electrocatalysis. However, I would first like to discuss about the institution. So, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, is ranked number two in engineering in India and fourth overall by QS ranking. We have total faculty of around 600 with around 10,000 students. And uh, we have among the brightest undergraduate students who come through a very rigorous examination. Uh, uh, focusing on material science and engineering and nanotechnology, uh, the departments in which uh, uh, material science and nanotechnology is done uh, are in the Department of Chemistry, which has around 33 faculty. Department of Physics has 55 faculty. Of course, uh, some of them do uh, nanotechnology, but I'll tell you, about all these departments, uh, which I've mentioned, the material science and engineering, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering. We have a very specialized department on textile and fiber engineering and a center for automotive research and technology. We also have a nanoscale research facility uh, with all clean rooms and all that, uh, where 60 faculty participate from uh, electronics, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, uh, chemical engineering, chemistry, physics, material science. Together, around 100 faculty and around 400 PhD and postdoctoral students work in various aspects of material science and nanotechnology. Our masters and uh, BTEC, which is undergraduate students, also do projects in material science and nanotechnology. So these are the areas in which various people work at IIT Delhi in material science and nanotechnology. So there are people working in catalysts, mainly in the chemical engineering and chemistry and polymer uh, in the material science department. People working on polymers, polymer composites for filters, scaffolds, and uh, various kinds of uh, drug delivery, etc. There are people working on metals and alloys, uh, on multiferroics, spintronics, sp superconductors, nanomaterials specifically for drug delivery, uh, for solar cells, and of course for water splitting, uh, PEC kind of cells. There is a big group in chemical engineering which works on hydrogen and alternate fuels, on biofuels, and uh, there are groups in our electronics and physics departments working on sensors. The, we have a full department working on smart textiles, 
and uh, which is a unique department in uh, the country, uh, working on various types of uh, textiles and uh, fabrics, etc. We have uh, people working on microfluidic devices, on fuel cells, batteries, on e-mobility. We have major thrust. We have a new department entirely devoted to e-mobility, using uh, to design charging stations. Uh, and of course, uh, as I mentioned, we have Department of Physics and Chemistry and Material Science working on superconductors. We have a mechanical engineering department working on 3D printing, laser cutting and additive manufacturing. Uh, so we have all the usual facilities, you know, all the uh, scanning probe techniques like AFM, uh, STM, M MFM, small angle X-ray scattering, the high resolution microscopies, cryotems, confocal microscopy, uh, fax machine for biologists, ultra fast uh, spectrometers, uh, doing femtosecond spectroscopy, and uh, all the uh, uni uh, electron beam, ion beam, uh, all techniques, PCVD, CVD, PCVD, uh, ALD. Uh, we have clean rooms of class 10, class 100, class of course, uh, for uh, making, uh, doing nanotechnology uh, using lithographic techniques. Uh, we have a central research facility having again, uh, other than the departments, we have a large central facility where all mass spectrometers, X-ray machines, uh, magnetic uh, squids and P PPMS, uh, XPS, uh, uh, EPR machines uh, are all there. We have very good computational facilities, uh, very high-end, uh, high-performance computing, and several clusters. We are also on the national grid, uh, which uh, which is centered in Pune in India, which is run by CDAC. We have a research park where we have incubators and startups working with faculty. For uh, more details, you can log into our site, uh, www.iitd.ac.in. We have several collaborations with several universities in Europe, USA, UK, Australia. We have a joint PhD program with the University of Queensland, Australia, and several other programs uh, with various countries like UCL, uh, London, uh, University of Southern Denmark, and many, many other uh, universities. On my personal area of research, I'll uh, tell you a bit. I work on nanostructured materials uh, to design them using uh, microemulsion techniques, hydrothermal techniques, uh, how we can grow nanowires, nanorods, and applications in clean energy, water purifications. I also have some interest on waste to well. So this is one of the areas where I make a band gap engineering in pore shell nanorods using uh, semiconductors, converting the UV semiconductor into uh, a visible semiconductor using a core shell structure and enhancing the photocurrent by increasing the thickness of the shell on the nanorods. Uh, we can work with uh, silver sulfide, indium sulfide. We have a variety of other materials like sodium niobate, et cetera, uh, which is also a good semiconductor, sodium tantalate, et cetera. We work with double shells like uh, N-type and P-type semiconductor on a UV photocatalyst like TiO2. So we can design these kind of uh, core shell shell structure, which has a double shell with a PN junction. And we see very, an, very low photoluminescence. That means enhancement of the efficiency of the charge carriers. We can work with core shell. We can make nanoparticles uh, on the shell and show differences. So how the band gap changes, band bending, etc., at the interface. We can look at facets like uh, make particles with different facets, cubes and octahedrons or polyhedrons. And these facets have different energies. And so we can try to stabilize the electron on one facet and the hole on the other facet. Yeah, using this kind of uh, design, we can enhance the uh, efficiency of the core shell nanostructure. So we can show this by studying the usual mod short key plots and you can evaluate the slopes and get the NP type of junction. You can cal calculate solar to hydrogen ratios and show that 
certain morphologies have higher efficiency. We can do the theoretical aspects of where the junction is NP type, you get a higher efficiency than the NN type of junctions. So these are all calculations you can do. We also work on some graphene type of things uh, with the uh, cadmium sulfide super particles. These are 400 nanometer particles embedded on the surface of graphene oxide. And uh, we can show using ultrafast spectroscopy about looking at the excited states, how the charge transfer is happening. Uh, electron transfer is rapid because of the presence of this graphene oxide. So that enhances the efficiency. This is one paper, recent paper, 2021, on such heterostructures for simultaneous exciton separation, ultrafast and photoelectrochemical studies. I have other projects on microfluidic devices for uh, and for making cartridges. So this is on a, a silica substrate, uh, putting pendant ligands to trap heavy rare earths, lanthanides, et cetera, making cartridge. So we can make this kind of cartridge uh, that is to pick up heavy ions, et cetera. The other thing is we do microfluidic devices uh, where you can, uh, this is very simple microfluidics without using clean rooms, et cetera, on PDMS, where we can do uh, online uh, photocatalysis. So using silver phosphate or visible light photocatalysis, we can embed it in the channels and do photocatalysis in these channels. So we have a dye degraded by flowing through these channels, etc. So you can design also different types of channels. These are thick channels in uh, 0.5 to 1 millimeter, very easy to make and make particles in the channels of different shapes, etc. Et this is one area, different shapes of these channels give rise to different shapes of particles. So I, I have another interesting area where a uh, waste to well, so you have a lot of waste of tin, metal tin uh, thrown away. So we convert them into catalysts. So these are iron oxide catalysts and use this catalyst for oxygen evolution reactions. This is one process. Uh, we can use used oil and using used oil, we can make new nanostructures, which are very useful. Monon dioxide uh, is a field emitter. We can use uh, this kind of thrown refined oil for making nanoparticles. We can use uh, paper, waste paper to make nanocellulose. This is another a interest to, for making nanocellulose. And make, make nanocellulose film, which is transparent or translucent, depending on the thickness of the films from waste paper, waste cups. Just as uh, this is what many, some idea of what are the things that we do. So basically, I wanted to tell you if you are interested in IIT Delhi's programs, of 100 faculty approximately work on various aspects of material science and nanotechnology. And you can, all these areas people are working. So please have a look at the website for the groups, several groups in IIT Delhi in at least seven departments, which I've listed in chemistry, physics, material science, mechanical, chemical, textile and fiber engineering. And if uh, this is very precise, if you're interested in battery or uh, e-mobility e or electric charging stations, et cetera. So this center precisely deals in that. Textile and fiber engineering works on smart textiles, wearable textiles or e-textiles. And uh, chemical and engineering works a lot on hydrogen and storage of hydrogen, alternate fuels, et cetera. So I'll stop there. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to ask. Thank you very much, Professor Ganguly, for your very interesting presentation and achievements. I'd like to ask if you have questions from our delegates. Here we have one from Professor Diego from this Brazilian Center of Research on Energy and Materials.
Congratulations, 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 congratulations. It's fine. Okay. Uh, just a question. I'd like to you comment. Uh, how how are you are exploring the waste to wealth nanomaterials in your center, and how far we are from products and interactions with companies on this theme? Yes. Uh, so yes. we. We do have, uh, in some cases, uh, some projects which I have worked on uh, uh, materials uh, you, to, uh, from tin, etc., waste tin, etc., making into catalysts. And the companies where the waste tin is coming from, uh, trying to give them back that material to be used for catalysts. Then uh, there are uh, uh, groups in our Institute of Chemical Engineering Department, which is uh, looking primarily into electronic waste. And that is a big thing. They have prototypes developed where uh, I think they are now into several kg uh, kilograms of electronic waste, which they want to take it up to 100 kg per day prototype. So that's a group in Chemical Engineering Department uh, where they're working on e-waste. I have worked on waste on uh, typically in the thermal plants, uh, carbon dioxide capture, also in uh, industry where sodium hydroxide is being used as a large uh, solvent and that uh, alkali waste, uh, how to protect the alkali waste. So we convert that into some of the materials of use like sodium carbonate, nanostructured sodium carbonate, nanostructured sodium nitrates, some of them are useful in the uh, in industry, like in the meat industry, etc. They need sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate. So we have uh, worked with some of them. And that's it. But there are several other groups. I told you about my work and another group in chemical engineering, which is mainly into e-waste. And uh, so if you are interested, we can certainly send you more information. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much once again, Professor Gangli and Professor Diego. And so we we are concluding our first section of this day. And now I would like to start the second session of the day related to the presentation of the activities related to our BRICS network on material science and nanotechnology, activities related to the creation of the web page, the network logo, and all their other activities. For this, I would like to invite our colleague from Russia, Professor Vladimir Schur, to present our, our to present the activities on this topic. Professor, Professor Schur, great to see you yeah. again. Good and day, everybody. Right. Yeah, do you hear me? Can you hear us? Yeah. It's a great pleasure for me just now to discuss uh, one of the important points of our meeting of the working group, yeah, to discuss the possibility how it will be possible to organize uh, nano network activities, yeah, in these terms it's necessary to prepare and to discuss the best organization of the web page, uh, about the logo, and about uh, all organization of our, our uh, you see, center, joint center. So uh, let me uh, show you. Yeah, so uh, let me start from the main ideas which can be realized, you see here. So the, uh, you see, it was necessary for us, for our organization, to combine the efforts of leading institutions of BRICS countries. The first one, then to identify the promising areas of basic research, there to enhance some cooperation, yeah, very important point, maybe the most most important one. 
of the BRICS countries and the most important institutes in these countries. So also to uh, try to do uh, more activities with uh, innovation-based economy, yeah, and the direction between the academia and private sectors. Yeah, of course, I don't sure that all of this, uh, you see, important points can be realized easily. But nevertheless, it's possible. Let me start to speak about the most uh, understandable for realization. Yeah. So in this case, it, international cooperation between the members, you see, in education, research, and training activities. Yeah, it's really, I understand how it's possible to realize it in, in the center, you see. Then uh, to obtain the grants, yeah, especially the international one, which can be obtained in the case of uh, appearance of some uh, productive international collaboration. So also organization of uh, conferences, workshops, and uh, other important meetings, yeah, which gives us the collaboration of international scientific and methodological uh, societies. Yeah, so also a very important point, and people speak a lot about it. So the joint training of uh, students, uh, you see, and uh, to realize some kind of joint supervision, yeah, also very important point. And the, really one of the points which have been uh, discussed here is the organization of web portal. Yeah, this one need to organize to help us to realize all these interesting yeah, activities. Yeah, let's, let's start to speak about if you have uh, some problem and it's necessary for you to uh, realize you see how it's organized. Yeah, the first one is some uh, lead coordinator, yeah, which is uh, you see, just now situated in Russia. It will be responsible for uh, over coordination of all these activities and uh, working with website of the center. Yeah, so all, also in any country, it will be some uh, focal point. Yeah, these focal points will be responsible for organization of this work in each country. Yes, yeah, so, so nine countries, nine focal points. Yeah, and then it will be a lot of uh, BRICS, uh, you see our center members, yeah, in each country. Just now at the beginning, it's about five from each country. So close to this number is just people who participate in this uh, meeting. Yeah, but nevertheless, it looks like it's open. So really other uh, organization, will uh, become the members of this uh, of this net yeah so really let's try to realize some problem yeah for example if somebody has some problem in his research investigation yeah so this is a person and this is uh, many problems which is necessary for him to solve and he don't have enough you see knowledge and enough equipment so in this case it's possible to search the equipment and service uh, via website, you see, and uh, to contact uh, via focal points, you see, via the lead coordinators. And as a result, it will be possible to find the just important institution which can help him. Later on, it will be possible to work just now, especially in, uh, you see, nowadays conditions with problems with international visits. It's possible to realize it, to send the samples and to realize some remote measurements. Yeah, it's very, uh, you see, easy to realize it, especially using the modern equipment. Yeah, then uh, in a better situation, it will be possible to have the working visits of researchers. You see, as a result, it will be possible to get some joint publications. Yeah, and it is sure that the international publications have usually the higher impact. Yeah. It's quite common. Yeah, and also it's possible to get the grants of scientific technological projects, you see, with the groups which appeared in this case. So the first step to have some joint investigation, joint results, the second one to have these grants. Yeah, then let's speak about another problem. Yeah, this is a problem with uh, if somebody want to have the higher qualification of his personal. Yeah, in this case, uh, for example, when it's necessary to get some new methods, you see the equipment which you have, yeah, and also to realize some new equipment 
and to have the better to work on it. Yeah, in this case also, it's possible to search on the uh, you see this uh, site, yeah, and to get the information about institution with high qualification in the uh, interested area of research, yeah, desirable area of research. Then it's possible to contact with the focal points, yeah, and the uh, lead coordinator. Then it's when you find it, it will be possible to have the training of personal, collaborative research, yeah, joint publications. And finally, of course, it will be very important in this case to reorganize some international scientific methodological conference and workshops. It's a very important point, and it's possible to do it easily. It's cheap, yeah, and at the same time, rather effective. Yeah, let's speak about the third problem. Yeah, the problem number three, which I will speak now, how to facilitate the academic exchange. Yeah, when we have such uh, our net, yeah. So the first, of case, of course, it's necessary to find some institution with high qualification via website. It's contact uh, with the, the, by uh, coordinators. Yeah, and later on, it's possible to have exchange of students, teachers, scholars, and uh, have some kind of uh, training purposes. Yeah, it's give you some joint supervision, some online lectures, which is also very, very, very good and very, very successful, which can be realized now. So online lectures and seminars. Yeah, and as a result, it's give you some kind of uh, successive results, you see, which can be realized just in situation which will appear just now when our center will try to work, we start to work. Yeah, so this is the main activity about the organization. And I will show you some logos, some projects of the logos, which can be, you see, discussed. And it's necessary for us, we have uh, three groups of logos. Yeah, and it's necessary to choose which will be the best. Maybe in this case, it's necessary to vote about who will be the best you have seen them. Yeah, so the first one, so-called Lotus. Yeah, it's similar to the emblem of the, you see, of uh, BRICS emblem. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's necessary to have some, uh, you see, three, three types of them. And also four of them for different directions of investigation, main directions. You see, so also it's possible to have another so-called ax. <laughs> yeah, in this case, it's organized in a similar manner. Yeah, but not absolutely the same. And you have also three types of them and also some specialized. Yeah, and the third one is a called flower. Yeah, which is uh, uh, also uh, the so, 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 so variant of it. Yeah, also you can find the, uh, you see the types and also some variants which can be obtained for different, different groups, yeah. So this one, uh, everybody of you have it, uh, it was sent to you in the program. Yeah, so you can see it and I hope that people even now have their opinion and it's possible to discuss of their opinion, which is the uh, most, most powerful, most uh, clear and most understandable for our need. Yeah, so uh, really that's, uh, you, you can compare, compare them here, yeah, and to choose what, what, what is the best. Yeah, I hope that it's uh, uh, possible to continue, uh, you see also to demonstrate the, uh, our, yeah, so thank you for your attention. And I would like to demonstrate our... Great presentation, Isn't Professor it? Vladimir. Thank you very much for your very impressive presentation. We didn't... It, yeah. And uh, really, in this case, it's possible to have, this is a view of it. You see, it's like all countries are, you see, active. So if you come to each country, it's possible for you. You see, to come to each country, to centers of each country, 
when you come to this uh, centers, you see the list of the centers, it's possible to come to the website of each center. Yeah, so to get the complete information about the center. Professor, can you facilitate us the link? Could you put the link on the chat? In order we see, uh, yes, the website, the link, the website link. If you, if you, uh, if please put on the chat, the website link. I, I will send it later. Yeah, just now it's working only like in such a ah, okay. you see, training. Yeah, of it. Yeah, but of course later on I will do it. Okay, thank you. Just a moment, yeah, sorry. It's, it's some problem with such demonstration, yeah. Yeah, you can see it, yeah, let, let me demonstrate. Another one, yeah, when we... Yeah, return here, it's possible to come to the, uh, you see, to get the information about the center. Yeah, you can see this information. You see about the key objectives, about the general information. Also, it's possible to get the main documents of it. Yeah, so the main documents and you can get the documents which give you the complete information about the official, official papers. Yeah, then uh, you can come to equipment. Yeah, and this equipment, yeah, it's uh, just uh, some kind of analytical equipment, some kind of, uh, you see, technological equipment. Just now it's only demonstration of one center, but it will be the information of all the centers. Moreover, when you come to it, it's possible to get the information just coming to the center, to have the detailed information about each unit, yeah, which give you the complete information about what can be done. Yeah, then... Yeah, it's uh, possible to come to services. Yeah, so it's the list of the services of uh, different different countries and different institutions. So it's possible for you to find the service which is the most important for you. Yeah, then also it's possible to get some news. Yeah, some news, some information about what's happened in different parts of the different institution. For example, it's possible to get the more detailed information about some results, about some events, yeah, something like this. Yeah, then it's possible to get some forum. Yeah, it's forum will allow you to have discussions, to give the questions, you see, and so on. So it's general forum and this, you see, and it's, typical situation with it, and it's possible to have a lot of messages, news, website forum, and so on and so on, and discussions. Yeah, it will be, to my knowledge, it's very important point. Yeah, it's possible to have some contacts. Yeah, it will be information of all organizations is here, you see, to get uh, the good information about it. Yeah, and uh, later on, uh, one of the key questions, you see, it's possible to organize the search the search of all this, you see, devices, it's possible to speak about scientific center, for example, this one. Yeah, it's possible to get uh, some research direction, for example, this one. And it's possible to choose a country. Yeah, and later on, it's possible to do the search. And you will come to some, you see, equipment and uh, which you will uh, want to uh, get it around, yeah? So that's, uh, you see, and finally, 
uh, it will be possible to each, uh, you see, organization to have the, uh, you see, the personal account, you see, and to come to this account, it will be a part of this uh, website. Yeah, but it's possible to produce and to modify it yourself. Yeah, to give them more information. Yeah, and it will be possible to come to it, you see, and change all the information of this account. So to modify it and to get the more fresh information, if you want. Yeah. So that's all uh, what I want to show you. Yeah, and I hope that, of course, it's possible for all, you see, participants to get some, uh, you see, their wishes, how it's possible to improve it. Yeah, and of course, to do their best, to organize it, to get the information in this, uh, the, you see, in short time. Yeah. So thank you for your attention, and I'm ready to answer the questions, and it will be important for me to get some wishes and some discussions on it. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you very much, Professor Vladimir Shur, for your impressive work. We are very happy to see to see this progress. And I would like to open for comments, questions, and suggestions from our delegates and the other BRICS delegates. We have comments here from Professor Caio. So, Professor Vladimir, thank you very much for kicking this initiative off. We are very excited to see this all put together in a single system that may catalyze a lot of our joint efforts. Uh, regarding the website, I was just wondering if you already have a plan for us to feed the system with new information so we can keep it up to date. So who is going to feed the system with details on new equipment, on new facilities. So for instance, if we buy a microscope, then should we add to the system or should we ask someone to do it on our behalf? This is a point that I would like to, to hear if you already have a plan. Uh, so if I may, um, I would suggest that we do it ourselves. So each uh, BRICS uh, local point would have the flexibility to add it and to feed it, to keep it up to date. So we don't need to concentrate too much uh, activities on a single person. That would be my suggestion. But thank you very much. Just the last note which I have demonstrated. It's a personal account of each group, yeah? And each group do their own work, to modify their own part of the, you see, of the site about the information, about some fresh results and so on, yeah. So it will be possible to do it yourself, yeah. It's very important point, I agree with you, because it's absolutely important to give it to one person, yeah. Yeah, it's, 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 it's realized just now, you can see. Yeah. Great, thank you. Good, good thank remark, you. very good. <laughs> Okay, thank you very much, Professor Vladimir and Professor Caio. And, they'll have, and we have questions from all other delegates, so the word is open. Professor Hilly. Yeah, I guess I have no yeah, comments. Just in terms of logos, do I have to choose one at this point or later? Yeah, uh, I, I'm not sure that just now it's pos it's necessary to do it now. Yeah, maybe it's possible later on by, you see, uh, email messages, you see, to get the information from each country. And later on, we will see which, which will be <laughs> so some voting. You see, remote voting <laughs> of it, yeah. Very nice. Yeah, it Very be, nice. It and the sense was initiating the website. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Thanks, good. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I have no more comments. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You're welcome.
We have more questions from our audience. Are there, is there someone with the hands up? No? We have another suggestion in terms of the operation of this. We have, ah, we have one more question. So go ahead. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, of course. Yes. No, thank you for the, the presentation, uh, the, the, the website and the activities that uh, this center is envisaged to do, I think are really good. Uh, but from, from our perspective, I think as we have mentioned earlier, and even our colleague from the DSI, we, we understand that the center as it's structured now, it's more on knowledge generation, which is very important because uh, the technology part has to be based in science. But just a comment for the overall audience and uh, especially this, uh, I, I think it's also important that we should use this platform to, to actually be very intentional in terms of innovation. Because most of the stuff that will come out of the basic research, eventually it needs to have to go to the, the market out there. And I think there are some countries within this group that already have what we can say uh, best practices in understanding how to take or translate the research into the market. It would help therefore if Part of this, or somehow we link uh, that there should be a translation of the research that would come out uh, to be taken as services and, 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 and products to the market. And that, unfortunately, we used to take it as a by-the-way efforts, but I think we should be intentional in this regard and say, how do we tackle the fact that we should be taking these things to the market? For me... I think we need to have a concerted effort and help each other to innovate because it's only when we innovate that all what comes out of the good research, the good uh, personnel, the students that are going to be trained uh, to take our services and solve uh, or bring solutions to the people of these uh, different countries. So it's just a comment and maybe to say, how could we do that? And, and do that intentionally and, 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 and put a concerted effort in that regard. Thank you. Yeah, also, I see that it's very good remark, yeah, but nevertheless, it's understandable that really it will be no innovation without uh, scientific results. Yeah. So scientific results can give you not only publications, but innovations also. Yeah, so it's it's the first step and the second step, yeah, it's innovation. I agree with you completely. Yeah. So really maybe speaking about the results, you see it's very important to tell that innovations must be included in the results of such a collaboration. But nevertheless, the collaborations give you also the innovation is more effective. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. So in this case, it's also some problems with patenting and uh, patents and <laughs> so some other activities, yeah, which is more complicated, yeah. But nevertheless, I hope that nevertheless, when some organizations, some uh, institutions with collaborate, yeah, it will be possible for them to solve these problems, yeah, because it's not not so easy as compared with publications. With publications, no problems. With innovations, it's appeared some some new problems. Yeah, you understand me. I hope. Yeah. Thank you for command. Yeah, uh, maybe on, on also some announcement. Yeah, it will be very important, you see, and many people speak about it, to get uh, the possibility to, you see, for people who have participated, for participants, to get the information, to get the possibility to visualize the presentations. Because it was a lot of very important, very interesting presentations. And of course, there was uh, very difficult to understand and to get the whole information in short time of this presentation. So if it will be possible to see them, maybe not to uh, any audience, but also for audience who have participated by their, you see, own, uh, you see, com coming to it. Yeah, it will be very important. 
So if uh, people, if participants, I agree with it, it will be very important that it will be possible to get it just on the site, yeah? And later on, everybody can come to the site and to see the information. And uh, speaking about the site, about the site, you see how to get it. Yeah, of course, in very short time, we will send it to all participants. Yeah, and it's possible to get it. And uh, later on, you see, it's possible to separate it to other places. You see, for people to come and to get this information about our joint activity. Okay, thank you very much for, uh, for the comments. So, do you have more comments from our side? More comments? No, no. I, I, would, I would like to ask if in this first moment, if will be possible to add information of companies and startups in this first moment, will be possible? Also, that uh, one of the very important points and just now to have the focal points, yeah? Because really it will be quite easier to com contact with, uh, you see, institutions of each country when we will have the focal points, yeah? So it is necessary from each country to send the information about the contacts of these focal points and then contact with these people, because really it will be better when people in each country contact with focal points and then later on from these focal points to the center. You see, such a possibility will be very important for some organization. Of course, in many cases, it's possible to come to the center even, uh, you see, from any, any institution, but nevertheless, these focal points, to, to know them, it's very important now because still we don't have the list of these focal points. And uh, also it's uh, very, very good to get the list of participants because not the institutions of participants, because just now we have the, you see, the list of uh, persons, yeah, but not the institutions with their contacts. Okay. What do you Okay, thank you, professor. And I'd like to suggest too that you have some ki uh, 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 kind of procedures to, uh, to feed the website with information, this uh, kind of uh, operation, operation procedures, instructions to, to every country feed the, the, the web portal, if possible. Okay, so more questions or comments? I, I think no, so uh, the next point is to choose the, the logo, right? We, we consider that, our, uh, that the logos are very beautiful and if our delegation uh, could vote, we would like to vote in the first one in the first logo of course I, I, i'm not sure if you need to decide uh right now we can open to to new votes uh after the meeting but if we we can express our vote our vote is for first one the first logo with log, uh, lotus flower I like Lotus so much, yeah, so much. it looks very, very, very good. And you see this part is demonstrate just the, uni you, you see unification, the units of all the all, all countries all together, yeah. It looks the most exciting, yeah, to, to, my, to my knowledge. I agree. So we have three votes, right? So if if other delegations would like to uh, express themselves, the moment is this. Maybe we will. Uh, Maybe we will. <laughs>
maybe the first one is the best, yeah, and in this case we will use just this one, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you can see that everywhere we start to <laughs> just with this one, yeah. That's, great, that's great, 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 great. So we have uh, uh, the, yes, select, yes. <laughs> a selected one, the logo number one. Great. So I I understand that the other the, the other logos from advanced magnetic and ferroelectric materials and are uh, derivation of these right of the first from the main logo is a derivation. Okay. 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 Just for. for you see, just now we speak about four uh, different direction of investigation, yeah, and it's just specialized for each. Great. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Vladimir, Vladimir Shur, again. And I think that you can, we can move to the next, the next uh, point of our, of our agenda that is a review of priority areas for the next BRIC joint call. The first point that I would like to mention is we decide if there is, if you have a moment, if this is the moment to reflect about these topics or if should be interesting, we we uh, wait a little bit more to think about a revision because we have these areas only, only, uh, only for one year. So since our first meeting in October 1st, 2000, 2020, uh, up to now, we have only one year. So the first point in our opinion that you should to consider is if it's the moment or not to review these priority areas. And, but I have, a, I have a suggestion too, that you need to, this is a second point, point. We would like to suggest that you reflect about how to organize uh, our meeting with uh, our joint call because we lost on, on, an opportunity to to do this uh, web meeting before our call. I w we understand that if you did this meeting before our joint call, so probably we will have uh, more more proposals because this meeting was a very exciting opportunity to understand and to see how other countries, BRICS countries, are thinking about material science and in and nanotechnology. But returning to the first point, we need to decide if this is the moment or not to uh, review our, our, our uh, this priority areas. So I open, I would like to open two comments other delegations. We can do both. We can, we can do it both. now or later. Yeah. Please go ahead, Professor Healy. As for me, I agree completely, yeah, and it looks like, uh, you see, it's possible to continue the activity which have been appears at the very beginning and to work in it uh, in this direction more and more, yeah, deeper and deeper, yeah. So the opinion of the Russian side, yeah. Great, Professor Vladimir. Professor Vladimir. So... Professor He Li from China. Yeah, I have no, I have no more yeah, comments. No, I... 
Sorry, could you repeat? Do, I, do we need to decide now, or I, I didn't get the question, sorry. The, the, the idea is to, to uh, discuss a little bit today if you consider that it's necessary to review, or including we can suggest to move this discussion to the next meeting in 2022. So keep the same, maintain these, these areas for this year. Same. And uh, every time you can add a little bit more if they have additional comments. But from our side, the current areas are good for us. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you, Professor Hilly. Okay. Uh, other delegations would like to manifest themselves? South Africa, please go ahead. It's the same subject, yeah, and uh, you see to work in this area and it's creation that our first choice was uh, good enough. <laughs> yeah. And presentation which people demonstrate here uh, show us that it was uh, quite successive and it's very interesting that each, each uh, team have the ideas how to continue this work and how to do it, to, to realize it better and better. Yeah. So there's no reason to change, to change the directions. Professor Arinzi, I, we, I, we didn't hear you. If you could repeat. No, no problem. Uh, it's for me. Yeah, I can tell that really it will be. Okay, from, from the Brazilian side, we would like to mention that these areas are, uh, are good for this moment and we satisfy it with this at this moment and we can discuss uh, a review of these priority areas in the future, perhaps in the next meeting or not. I think that this is the consensus, right? Yes, yes, sure. Okay. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. So we overcome this point and we can move to the next one that is the next working group meeting in 2000 in 2020 and we considering that the first meeting war was organized by our russian colleagues and the second one was organized by our indian colleagues and this third meeting is being organized by the brazilian uh, delegation so we, rec we asked our colleagues from South Africa and from China about the interest of uh, hosting the next, the, next, uh, the next working group meeting. And we, have a very, a very, and we are very, ha very happy that we have two candidatures for the next, for the next uh, uh, meeting. That is from China and from South Africa. So I would like to open to comments uh, from these two delegations uh, in order to, to, to choose one.
Good, good afternoon, Chair and um, participants. My name is Punka from the Department of Science and Innovation. I am the National Coordinator for the NSI BRICS. And um, I would like us to vote that we, we as South Africa host the next meeting. We host the next meeting in 2022. The reasons being that um, I think we have been able to amass a very good team of um, researchers in South Africa, and we are really, really looking forward to hosting um, the delegation in our next meeting. And um, China, please give us an opportunity because we have been hosting many, many working group meetings. <laughs> That's my plea. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Hili, your comment. Please. Your comment. Your comment. Thank you. I guess uh, yeah, we plan to hold the next meeting at the beginning, but uh, it's always fine for us, I guess, because uh, next year China will be the chair for Greek countries, and uh, yeah, we'll be happy to host uh, for the next meeting. But if South Africa want to uh, want to host first, and we can move to the next one, it's okay for for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. We are very. We are, we are very happy that you have our venue for this, for the the fourth meeting of our working group. It will be a pleasure to be. Uh, to, to visit South Africa, if of course possible, due to the sanitary conditions and the pandemic conditions. I, I would like to ask if everybody agree with this. Brazil agree. Every, everybody agree? Who knows what will be <laughs> about conditions next year? Yeah, but uh, I hope that really it will be possible to visit, you see, this exotic place for us, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so far from our country, yeah, and uh, I, am, I see a lot of interesting, you see, activities in the area, yeah, and it would be, you see, not only interesting, but also important for us, yeah, I hope, yes. I agree with it. Okay, India, would like to comment? No, from the Brazilian side, will be a pleasure. Will be a pleasure to uh, interact with South Africa colleagues in order to help to uh, organize the fourth one, and will be a pleasure to visit South Africa if the sanitary conditions uh, allow us. Okay, and uh, South African colleagues, is there uh, a better moment or a, be a better period of the year to, to organize this meeting? Or for example, the first semester or the second semester? Early second semester. Okay, okay, great. And I would like to suggest that all the delegates send suggestions of topics to be discussed in the fourth uh, meeting, for the fourth meeting by uh, electronic messengers. Uh, because uh, unfortunately we don't have mm, uh, enough time to discuss this point at this meeting. And walking to the end, I would like to invite uh, the delegates to uh, the final remarks, starting by our Russian colleagues. So uh, I would like to invite the Russian colleagues to do the final remarks. Dear colleagues, today we are finishing a very intense three day meetings of the BRICS Working Group on Material Science. 
and nanotechnology. I would like to once again thank Brazil for hosting an important of this important event. It was the first meeting since the decision on uh, BRICS Network Center for Material Science and Nanotechnology established had been made. It was very important for countries to identify the first 25 participants of this center, five from each country. And it was really interesting to listen to uh, presentations by these 25 participants about their areas of work in the field of material science and the capacities of existing scientific and technological equipment. I am sure that new contacts and information will lead to establish new promising scientific collaborations between scientists in several countries. During these days, we were able to discuss possible organizational mechanisms, options for the logo of the network center and the structure of the site, which I think the Ural Federal University will be able to launch in the coming months. I want to wish the first participants successes in the development of the joint research and masters uh, and postgraduate programs. And I wish our BRICS Network Center successes and active development. Thank you for your attention and be healthy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Russian dele delegation. And I, now I would like to invite the delegation from India to the final remarks. Greetings to all. I am Dr. Poonam Yadav on behalf of uh, Government of India. So I would uh, like to extend my thanks for cooperation and interest of all the participants. And especially we would like to thank Brazil for hosting the third meeting of BRICS Working Group on Material Science and Nanotechnology. It was a pleasure being part of such a gathering. I appreciate the, this opportunity for thanking to all the gathering which was there. We are thankful to the various participants from different countries across the globe in the, and giving their inputs in the area of nanoscience and technology. This would help us in exploring and identifying the areas of potential cooperation between the countries. So I would take this opportunity to thank our Indian participants who have given their valuable time on such a short notice. Thank you all and stay safe. Thank you very much, uh, Indian delegation, uh, for your words and for all your support. And I would like to invite Chinese, Chinese delegation to the final remarks. Thank you. I think, uh, yeah, on behalf of our Chinese, uh, Chinese delegation, we would like to thank Brazil for organizing this wonderful meeting. And uh, three days passed really quickly and we have discussed a lot of topics and we have known each other much better. And I also would like to special thanks to Professor Vladimir Shur for, for the website and for the logo. And we looks like more have a team and I'm sure we're gonna add more stuff into the uh, website. And so we can have more information exchange between us. And uh, I really hope to soon have, have some more like corporations in terms of student training, student exchange and facility uh, sharing and so on. And uh, yeah, I just want to mention one thing. So maybe uh, for, for later, we can organize a kind of a scientific workshop, which in, we can in, in invite a group of scientists from each country to have like a, a workshop so we can find more opportunities to collaborate. And also on behalf of, our, of my institute, so if you have interest to visit us or to like set up collaboration between us, please just shoot me an email and I'll be happy to answer your questions and happy to visit you. And I also thank South Africa for hosting the next meeting and we wish to see you there in person. And thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Hili. We are totally uh, in accordance with you. So we can organize workshop, joint workshops to uh, discuss more uh, the possibilities. And now I would like to invite uh, uh, our del 
the delegates from South Africa to define our remarks. Hello, on behalf of the South African delegation, we really want to express our gratitude to Brazil for hosting such a successful uh, working group meeting, uh, hoping that uh, this will really start to facilitate uh, the exchange, the, 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 the knowledge generation, uh, the, the, the exchange of young scientists, and, and uh, hopefully we will, as I had Professor Shaw saying, it is difficult, but I think we have to engage in understanding how do we take uh, some of this, because there's good, good science, but we need to take it out there as solutions. So for that, I hope that we will all be having this uh, concerted effort. Yes, it's that uh, uh, by uh, piecemeal, but we, we are saying material science and nanotechnology, not nanoscience, which means we have to see technologies out there. So having said that, I really uh, also appreciate what uh, the working group, uh, by trusting us to take the next meeting, you are welcome and hopefully everything will be fine so that you can see our beautiful country. Thank you very much for trusting us with that, uh, hosting the meeting next year. Thank you very much, you. South Africa delegation. It will be a pleasure to, to visit South Africa in the next year. And from, from the Brazilian side, I would like to mention that, of course, BRICS cooperation is strategic for Brazil, is strategic for our country. And, of course, it's not easy to, to cooperate because you need to... Uh, stimulate the cooperation. You need to. Uh, we need to. You need to have patience, and you need to uh, find synergic areas. You need to combine all the interests. But it's strategic. Strategic for us, and I suppose that is strategic for uh, all the BRICS countries. I would like to mention that our our country is launching in a couple of months a new Brazilian strategy for advanced materials and nanotechnology. It will be a pleasure to share this plan with BRICS colleagues when the plan is ready. I would like to, uh, I would like to thank the local organizations represented here by Professor Lisandro and Professor. Thank you very much for all the support for all the enforcement, for all activities. And today we have a local, an, another local activity. activity. So we're going, we're going to visit uh, the Amazon, Amazonas River. So it will be a very impressive experience. I'm totally sure about this. I would like to thank all the delegations from Russia, India, China, South, South Africa, and a special acknowledgement to the Brazilian delegation here with me, Professor Ronaldo, Professor Diego, Professor Maximiliano, Professor Caio, our Professor Rodrigo, Claudia, Professor Claudia, Professor Lisandro. I would like to thank to our technical staff. Thank you very much, guys. You, you were very uh, important for us. Thank you very much. And of course, this is not the end. It, this, is, this is only the beginning of a great journal, journey in terms of advanced materials and nanotechnology. And it will be a pleasure to, to, uh, met ev to meet everybody uh, in person in South Africa in the next two years. Thank you very much. And I would like to ask one more, one more point. So man, keep your camera, cameras open and we would like to, to do a final picture of our meeting. Everybody here going to the, to the big screen that you have here in order to, to do a final picture. Vamos lá? Fazer a nossa foto final?
please go ahead if you want to if you want to to comment or do some Go ahead. Uh, Ken, you just spoke about the plan of uh, you know uh, uh, nanotechnology which you are coming up in in Brazil. So whenever you have this plan, can you share with India? We'll be open for that. Yes, for sure. Uh, the plan is not ready. Really, is not ready. Really, is not ready really, really, yet. Really. The plan is not finished yet, but in a couple of months we will be ready, and we we intend to share with all BRICS colleagues. Please one one moment more. Everybody smiling. Bricks, bricks. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you very much. So we, we're going to share the pictures with everybody. Thank you very much, and see you soon in South Africa. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye, thank you.